Welcome back to Tales from the Power Age. How are you doing, guys? Feel good, Thank mate. You. We are talking about thrash and thrash metal in 1990 tonight. And we're taking you all the way back to the Clash of the Titans, Slayer Megadeth, Testament, and Suicidal Tendencies. So uh, this gig was at, uh, well, the gig that we're going to talk about tonight was at Wembley Arena. So looking forward to that. So uh, let's kick off. And Gav, if I could go to you first, you can maybe talk about some of the press ads and the ticket. Surely. Yeah, this was uh, uh, irresistible to us. I mean, look at that. <laughs> it's, it's so cool. Um, that's my ticket. Uh, for some reason, it's really kind of faded and kind of a bit blotchy, but love the iconography of this gig. It, it's just such, such a cool graphic. Wish I had a T-shirt. So, yeah, there's the these are the press ads. Um, I'm not sure why they chose kind of pale on pale, but uh, there it is. It looks better in the black and white version, in my opinion. Um, and then there's merch. So I don't, I don't know if any of us got this, I and mean, I don't know why we didn't. Nah, I didn't like no. it, to be honest. Really? I know, I know, no. I know why we back. didn't. The back's terrible. The back's terrible. Yeah, I'll give you that. The front yeah. on the left is brilliant. But I do know why we didn't, Gav. We were at a stage in our lives when we were on the piss, and we would just spend our money on alcoholic beverage. <laughs> we had a cracking oh, yeah. afternoon. We didn't want to buy clothes. Whereas when we were fifteen quid t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, we didn't want any clothes. We just wanted to have a beer and have a really great time. And we were going to see the rock show and it was all the metal bands were in town. So, yeah, that's why we didn't get a T-shirt. But obviously all the bands did their own as well. And we yeah, still avoided yeah. those. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> and, you know, in this case, they're both great. These yeah, the two yeah. Slayer, they are. They are brilliant. Yeah, I yeah. particularly like the Slayer one. Mm. I love them both. Yeah. By the but way, they, these, these guys avoided the T-shirts. I avoided the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah you made sure you were safe by not even going <laughs> yes. but uh yeah i mean i, these, I don't know these, if they'd have let you in in your cowboy boots still i'm not sure if that's a thing no, probably not I, there were no women in there so it was just a, or a angles. Uh, you're not anyway. wrong there were no women there <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah testament suicidal um and we'll come on to later these are all these four bands all had a brilliant album this year so you know, it, it was perfect sense for them to tour together and to promote their albums and, you know, get in front of uh, like-minded people. So there you go, everyone there. The, there's the, the merch, none of which is owned by us, but uh, I'm, I think it's right. Let me know if you think these are, these weren't available or whatever at the, at the day. Really can't remember. There you go. And London's the last night of the European tour, interestingly, on the t -shirt. First band on was Testament. Um, Jam, any memories? We, we think. We think. This we is think. more. We need comments on this as well, guys. Help us out. Yeah. When, when not, none, none, none of us are sure whether it was suicidal or testament, but we're yeah, we're not. Yeah, <laughs> testament only played six songs, though, right? Yeah, yeah, it's it's like it seven, but... yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, ending in burnt offerings, which we've talked Just about before. The greatest ever record. Absolutely epic song. So you could have been at the bar queuing up for some drinks. By the time you got your drinks and got back in, their set could have been over. <laughs> so by the time by the time you got your drinks, it's going to be more like Clash of the Titan as opposed to Titan. <laughs> so yeah, there's the the front cover of Kerrang around the same time, and the uh, the press ad that had the album and Clash of the Titans together, which is nice. But, uh, but it was really, it was really it was really it was a really strange time because of course 1990. And we've been through that we've done the 80s we've been there and this is off the back of the 80s we were turning we were coming out with some a, quite a metal situation for a lot of us and what our musical tastes were and this really fitted in well with where we were um quite angry at the i know i was sort of quite angry at the world sometimes and loving my metal and it didn't get much more metal than slayer megadeth suicidal and well, you off. just you just turned 21 a week before so yeah there you go you. see exactly i didn't even know how old i was um, but yeah, some great, great times, and, and yeah, Testament were, were, were there, they were there by rights. We'd seen them a few times already, haven't we? We, they, we saw yeah. them support. I saw them support a couple of big bands, and I really Fantastic. liked them. They, yeah, they they always put in a good display. They really were a sort of a, they were a strong band, and so we knew them already. Um, so we knew they were going to be decent. And normally, you get four bands on a bill. You're not expected to be into all four of them, and I think that was what made this clash. This this is what made it happen. I think and the fact it was at Wembley Arena. For these bands, yeah. made it a big. It was like a, that's a big place to well, fill. It was, it was massive, and we our tickets. It was only us three went, wasn't it? 
Uh, I don't think anybody else came, but we were right at the back. Yeah, mm. which having said that was great because we were we were opposite, weren't we? Weren't we opposite the stage? Yeah, yeah, right at the back. Yeah, opposite the stage yeah. on the seats. Which I don't mind. I don't mind if you're opposite. I, I'm not a big fan of being at the sides. For, no, yeah, to look I agree. Than the game. Yeah. I like I'd rather just be available to, be able to look straight ahead. So no, mm. we, had, we had decent t- seats, decent tickets. Um, great, at- really great atmosphere. A real coming together of, of like-minded metalheads, um, and they kicked off the they kicked the kick the bill off really well, didn't they? Testament. Yeah, they played one song off the new album, Souls of Black, the title track. But the uh, three, four, five, and six, absolute bangers. Every single one of them, brilliant, brilliant thrash metal stuff. Cool. The gaps. The question is, can you remember any of it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh. I can remember a lot about this gig. Cool. Well, it's... I can't remember buying any drinks, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> We'd probably been in a pub for quite a while, to be fair, when we got in there. It was a half five door, so we must have started probably about midday, I reckon. Yeah, on we this, up on early, this yeah. One. When, <laughs> Wembley High Street. Yeah. Yeah, in the days where you could actually drink on the street in Wembley. Jesus, try doing that now. No, but as well, we wouldn't have even been in Weatherspoons. So that hadn't been invented at that point. No. So there was, no, there was no JJ Moons in Wembley High Street. We'd have been in the boozers on the corner. But yeah. Yeah, the Green Man was still there, though, wasn't it? That we was in the Green Man, yeah. We'd have been in the Green Man. There you go. All right. Well, that's testament. So, uh, who was on next, Gab? I think, well, twelve, 12 pound fifty. It was by the way. I was just going to say. I was just you. You read my mind. I was looking for tickets to this. Three pounds a pound. So twelve. And that ticket. The reason it's gone faded. It was an awful ticket. It was like it was like a. It had a smooth covering. Whether yeah, they yeah, thought it, right, yeah, it did. Yeah. But they didn't keep that for long. Mm. That <clears> that ticket style didn't last very long at all. It was a small yeah. ticket, and it was plasticky coating on the front, yeah. and it just. Yeah. Like, Great value, just to, by contrast, Little Angels, um, a few months later, at Town and Country Club, was £7.50. So, yeah, it's a good price, mm. isn't it? It's a brilliant price. Iron Maiden yeah. was £10 uh, two years earlier. That's about right. Yeah. Anyway, there you cool. go. So, yeah, next up, or not, Suicidal. And, they're, so, yeah, like I said earlier, they're supporting Lights, Camera, Revolution, which was probably my favorite album of theirs and uh it's just got a bunch of classics on it their single that they were advertising around the time was send me your money yeah. it's a great great fun track and uh yeah, they, got, they got all the rest of the bands to come on and uh do the backing vocals to that at the end so the yeah. stage was absolutely full they were all doing it even dave mustaine got on stage good memory well wow. there are quite a few yeah. songs off this album aren't there because they you can't bring me down. Is alone. Is lovely. Is lovely. Yeah, lost again. And send me your money. Send me so your money. Yeah. Unlike like Testament, that. they were really pushing the album. Yeah, I but saw luckily, your money. It's a great fun track in the middle there as well. If you've never heard that before, it's absolutely yeah. brilliant. The only bad thing about this, I mean, it was it was for me. This is the why I was going because it was going to be the first time I was going to see Suicide. I was a massive Suicidal fan. Um, really, really got into them uh, big time. Mike Muir was just a god to me, uh, and. Uh, Unfortunately, the whole thing was let down um, by Mike himself because he did a very, very long uh, monologue. I can't remember f- before which song it was. Uh, and when I say long, it was long. It must have been at least five minutes. It might even have been ten. And the worst thing about it was you couldn't understand a single word he said. <laughs> so you could put all this effort into it. And I've got, Christ knows what he was talking about. But the, everyone was just sort of shuffling their feet and looking at each other. And uh, going, yeah, okay, Mike, just just get on with the music pick, can you please? And uh, that, that was a little bit, little bit of a downer on there on seeing them for me. But yeah, the, the songs they played were just fantastic. Didn't have a certain Metallica bass player as well. Yeah, Robert Trujillo was in the band at the time. <laughs> you can see him there in the middle in his nice shorts and white socks. Mm. Of course, his son is now in Suicidal, so there you go, is playing it? bass. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. But considering this is the first time we've seen them, Gaps had been into them forever. I'd got into them a bit before this, and but then when this record came out, because it was, and I played five out of seven of the tracks. Luckily, if you're going to do five out of seven on a new album, then it'd be your greatest. It's just an immense record. It is. Um, all of us at this point, our whole friendship, all of our friends, yeah. all of us. Even, even Josie loved album. this album, didn't he? Now, Josie was massively into it. <laughs> yeah, and again, this, the attitude. I can't believe that anyone's watching this. Everyone's going to know this record. <laughs> Um, our mate Josie, watching it more like. <laughs> um, yeah, our mate Josie loved this record. 
And it was one of those records, and we'd be out on the, on, we'd go out and have, and have a drink of an evening, a nice soiree. One particular night, I'm sure you'll all remember this, all you got, he got home uh, and his parents were away. So he got home and he did the thing, I think all of us did, and I know I did, we got home, it's like one or two in the morning, he went up to bed, he got into bed, he put, so, put a record on, he put his headphones on, and this particular night it was suicidal, and it was on his headphones full blast, and he's fast asleep, and turned over, as you do, and the lead came out of his record player, and <laughs> it then played the rest of the suicidal tendencies record out loud, I don't know if he had the CD or if he had the record, but it was out loud, the whole of his road heard this <laughs> and the story went the next day we found out about it because a guy that lived a few doors down heard and he had to get up and climb up he climbed up into and got into Joel's win bedroom window <laughs> went in turned the record off because the whole street had suicidal full blast giving it they large. were upset you can't, you can't bring me down at two o'clock in the morning or whatever on a, on a Saturday night and Anthony this bloke top climbed in turned it off then left, and then the next day, Josie had to be told that this had happened because he didn't even realise. Um, suffice to say, it went down in folklore, and yeah, brilliant memories. Lucky Such he didn't get memories. punched in the mush. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Such, especially from Anthony. <laughs> such a great record. I think it was. I think it was. Anyway, it's such a great record that brought all of us together, and all of us liked. You know, even our friends that weren't completely into this type of thing were blown away because it was such a great record. Yeah, it's one of the greatest uh, albums of the 90s. You Can't Bring Me Down is, is still a stone cold classic, isn't it? The lyrics, the ranting in the lyrics and the yeah, aggression. Brilliant. Yeah. The lyrics, but, but I think part of the reason, we've told this story before about Gappy, that it was known at the snooker club as Mike Muir, and he signed in as Mike Muir. One of the reasons, obviously, was that he used to, we literally, that song, even if that song wasn't on, we'd say, Gaps, you can't bring me down. and. He would literally just, he would rant those lyrics out word for word, just literally, boom. And yeah, he would just do it off that. And it was hilarious to be in his company for him to just like zoom that out. And again, and it meant a lot at that age, 21 years of age, where we were at the time. It meant yeah, a that, lot. That, there's the lyrics in that song, yeah, absolutely. At that age, yeah. Yeah, anyway, really what days, what memories? Borrowing um, his mum's headscarf so he could put it around his bonks and look like that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, borrowing his. His little brother's white socks, so he could put them with his shorts. No, <laughs> I didn't go that far. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, next band, Megadeth. Gappy, yeah, as soon yeah. as you seem to have a good memory of this gig, maybe you should keep. Oh, well, it was the mighty Megadeth, isn't it? And it's the first time we were going to see him with the classic lineup, which uh, started around this time. And again, the set list is uh, it's just unbelievable. The songs they play off this. Uh, yeah, the much uh, much missed Nick Menzer on drums there, and the much missed from the band uh, Marty Friedman on guitar. But uh, I mean, look at Dave there. I mean, he's just a god, isn't he? He's just so unbelievable with his hair there. Uh, yeah, the, un unbelievable set list. And Holy Wars, not even as a because it was a, such a new song. Obviously, it wasn't a uh, an encore back then. Unfortunately, uh, we had to listen to Anarchy in the UK as the last song, but. Never mind. We were we were still uh, going mental from everything. And <laughs> you got Devil's Island, Take the Prisoners, Peace Cells, In My Darkest Hour, The Conjuring, which he didn't play live for a very long time after this, because he uh, became a born again Christian. And uh, the lyrics are about black magic, so he didn't uh, didn't didn't do this song for a long time. Hangar 18, Wake Up Dead, yeah, fantastic, brilliant. Seen them loads of times, and uh, this is probably one of the best ones. Hasn't Mark played with them again recently? Because he, he, he has, he has joined them on stage, yeah. yeah, yeah. So they buried the hatchet, whatever. Oh yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Jama, uh, your thoughts? I, these band, well, the thing is, when these speaks, these bands have come up. I'm thinking gaps because it's your favourite. It's always like, oh, you love them. Oh, you love them. Wow, this was happening. Oh, this was my lineup for sure. <laughs> it's just band after band, yeah. Um, too many times I know that not to put a down on things, but too many times I saw Megadeth and they didn't do it for me. It would be Dave with his head down. I don't know if that's due to different lineups and stuff. I saw them play with Priest. I've seen them play. Often I've seen them second on a big bill. I think, did they were they did they play with Scorpions or something like that? Um, yeah, they played Scorpions, yeah. I was yeah. the only one to watch them. You were in a bar. No, we watched one. We did watch them. <laughs> then we nipped for a pint. Anyway, um, too many times I saw them and they didn't quite... Dave just put his head down and just shred. Yeah, he then, never does a lot of talking. He just songs. He's not engaging, is he? He's no, not, no. He's no. not a front man by any means. Yeah. 
but I remember them actually this I remember this and it being a real I don't know if it felt like a festival of metal I thought I remember them being really good and just really heavy and it can get you can sometimes get a bit lost in the muddiness of a Wembley arena I mm. thought I remember this and being really actually being a good day and being really good um or whether it's because it was young but yeah it, they really did it and they played some crack it there some great tracks in there and then we were treated to the Sex Pistols encore which is always great Again, touring, uh, as I've said before in uh, previous things, is the greatest metal album of all time. And then the master, heavily into their iconography at this stage of the career, with an epic T-shirt and epic logo. And um, another epic cover. Yeah. So dark, so they disturbing. Just, just so don't care, do they? Yeah, brilliant. So, yeah, we, we're pretty sure they headlined. <laughs> <laughs> we're definitely yeah. sure they headlined fact laden program tonight um yeah and start start your set with raining blood why not kick them right between the eyes Amazing. see I'll, I'll jump in because i was the least i was the not least into them i didn't i didn't own a slayer record at this time mm. they, not they didn't pass me by because this lot were well into them um I wasn't a massive fan. The thing is, I still actually knew their songs, which is quite, you know, when you're in that position where you know you know them. And I love Raining, Raining Blood. There's some of the lyrics and some of the songs that I know better than others from Gaps singing it at like, singing it at my, my birthday parties. I'd often do karaoke at, at from my 40th onwards. I had a 40th, 41st and over a few years. And he'd also, I'm doing slow. I'm, I'm doing slow. And say, so, yeah, okay. And he would clear the room <laughs> in a minute of doing <laughs> songs with the C word in and stuff like that. And people were like, Oh, is there going to be another one of these ones? No, don't worry. We'll have some Bon Jovi on shortly. Um, but yeah, Gaston was picking But back in this day, back in our early 20s, um, they were just, I, I really enjoyed, I remember just them being so metal. But I did, I'll be honest, I preferred shouting Slayer than necessarily being down the front watching them because we used to shout Slayer a lot. I don't know if that's still a thing that people do, but we used to shout is. Slayer when we were drunk. We'd shout it an awful lot. That's my input for the gig. And for me, yeah. they're coming off the, the perfect three Slayer albums for me, they didn't ever get any better than those three. So then yeah. to hit them on the tour after the third was just the perfect set list for me. I couldn't, I couldn't argue with it. It was just and obviously that lineup as well with Dave Lombardo, um, who was soon to be out, I think, after this. Did he do another album? Was it this the last album? This was the last one he did yeah. before. Coming back I love back. his drumming. I think he, get, he got replaced with people that were, you know, technically able to do what he could do but for me some x factor that dave's got that just gets right into my my soul he's an amazing player really. yeah just, just watch some of his youtube videos from behind the kit it's just yeah. incredible what he can do or what he could do the energy i mean just impossible to, to be to be able to play bloody 16 songs at, at this rate you know just incredible and so effortlessly when you see him from behind He's just doing super fast stuff, but not really moving his body a whole lot, you know. Just very, very talented man. Yeah, and, there's not uh, many slow ones in there. Is there no. Any, there's only two or three slowish songs in, in that set list. Not many breathers. The rest, the rest of them are just balls out, total thrash metal. They played it's seven songs off the new album as well, which is, is yeah. brilliant. Because the new album, the, the Seasons in the Abyss, is, is great. Unfortunately, they didn't play probably my favourite Slayer song of all time, which is Seasons in the Abyss. Which is the? Uh, oh yeah, uh, that would have been a slow ending. One. Yeah, but what a great song that is! But oh yeah, I love that. Skeletons of Society, Spirit in Black, War Ensemble, which you can see in there twice, and the reason it's in there twice is Gav, because they shot the a promo video. They did it twice so they could shoot footage of it with the crowd. I guess should have looked. We should have looked it up. I'm sure it's there mm. somewhere. But yeah, that so they got Wembley crowd shots for the video. Yeah, so they went into uh, Angel of Death was the last song they played. So they got you got 15 and 16, the two title tracks of the previous two albums. Oh, yeah. Angel of Death, one of their fastest ever songs. And uh, Dave's drumming on that is immense, uh, especially the bit at the end where he does the uh, double bass drumming when nothing else is going on. I was so looking forward to, to hearing whether he could actually do it live. And of course, he pulled it off like a master. I remember us talking uh, about that. Yeah. He does, he does it longer as well, just yeah, to be yeah, arrogant. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he does it longer. absolutely immense. In the days before uh, uh, all these guys now that can do double bass drumming twice as fast as this, but yeah. <laughs> but at the at the time he was the fastest and uh, he was the best and he's still one of the greatest drummers of all time. Yeah, 
And he's had a yeah. stint with suicidal, hasn't he? He has, yeah. He's not in yeah. them now, but no. he did have a stint with them. Yeah, yeah that would have been good. I love how yeah, you two what? just managed to transport. You literally managed to transport me back almost by time machine to back to this year, to this gig, and you two talking bollocks about a drummer and me there <laughs> saying, I'm going to go back off to the bar, lads. I'll, I'll see you in a minute. No wonder I was so pissed for this one. You two going, oh, he's a great drummer. Oh, what about that one? Yeah, I'd have, I'd have been making new friends at the bar, but that's a good yeah, thing. Well. We so do like talking drums. Yeah, you've got to respect we, the classics. Yeah, if it was anyone other than Gav on the controllers, Nerd Alert would have been going along for the last couple of minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Right, well, that's yeah. Slayer. Um, let's move on to the, to the was a UK and American tour, right, Gav, I think? This. Yeah. There was indeed. Yeah, they did Europe and the UK with this lineup that we've been talking about. And then they regrouped, I think, the end of the year or the following year in the US with adding Anthrax and Alice in Chains and removing Suicidal and Testament. Yeah. Something like that. Anyway, it was, there's, yeah. there's the group shot of both tours and there's the American logo and press. So yeah, kind of Alice in Chains was kind of a strange additional band. because they. It was, met. all the other bands said they, they killed it as well. Yeah. All the other bands, especially Anthrax, were really into them. They said they were really good. It would have been good for them if they did pull it off, you know, if the audience did respect them, because you've got a whole new audience, because, you know, yeah. they're more of a grunge band, aren't they? But, mm. you know, so br brave booking, but if it worked, fair play. And uh, obviously getting Anthrax in there as well, it kind of, um, it's the big, big four type lineup, wasn't it, that, I mean, the anthrax has bolstered that, but you're you're us, and you're like, where the where's suicidal? So yeah, the anthrax really makes that strong, doesn't it? In my opinion. yeah, and interestingly enough, they started at seven over in America, where it was half yeah. five here. Yeah. So you got seven uh, seven p.m. doors, I would imagine that is, and then you got yeah. four bands to get in. Well, maybe the maybe their curfews were later in the states. Yeah, I don't maybe. know. Not normally. It'd be good to hear if there is anyone that's watching this now that were, were there. We'd love to hear that because we find that really interesting how it works with curfews and that. Because yeah. we get quite strict. We've always had pretty strict curfews here, especially yeah. as we've come as it's got later in, in the time. Love the two knots on the uh, on the skulls there. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. It's the only anthrax thing you got there is two knots on the skulls. <laughs> yeah, so similar to the logo we had over here, but with with extra anthrax. Yeah. No, no cool. Alice in Chains, but no. hey-ho. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Let's clash of the Titans. So, um, look, if you're there, tell us your memories. Hopefully it concurs with the memories of these boys, um, some <laughs> better than others. Um, famous date around the uh, around the time. So um, from our perspective, we've got a new lives channel. So if you want to check out any of the live uh, gigs that we've uh, we've got, if you're into this bunch, we've, there's a couple of good Metallica videos from download last year that you might be interested in. So I'd certainly check those out. If you uh, want to be in contact with us, you can uh, contact us on Facebook, on Tales from the Power Age, on Twitter, on Tales from the Power Age, at TTFTPR, online at www.talesfromthepowerage.com, or you can get some merch on Redbubble. So um, I hope you enjoyed that. We did. Uh, well, those three did, for sure. And we've got some badges as well, which uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll show you at another time. Anyway, cheers, guys. Bye. Bye-bye now. Cheers, boys. Bye-bye.